Today, we're going to talk about differential equations. A differential equation is just an equation with a derivative in it. And these are some examples of differential equations. Like any other function, we can classify differential equations in terms of their characteristics. The one we most commonly classify by is order. So order is determined by the highest number derivative in the equation. Here, there's first derivative, and that's the only derivative. So this is a first order differential equation. Here, there's a second, a first, but the second is the highest. So this is a second order. And for this one, here's a fourth derivative and a second derivative, but fourth is higher. So this is a fourth order differential equation. In AP Calculus, we only go over solving first order differential equations, and you'll see stuff like this in college level differential equations courses. I'm going to solve this very simple differential equation to teach you some terminology regarding them. While they're differential equations, the premise is still the same. We need to isolate y and solve for it. So here we have dy over dx equals x. So I want to get this dx onto the other side. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by dx. But now we have dy's and dx's that we can't get rid of. So what do we do? We have to integrate. And so we perform the indefinite integral on both sides. So we have a plus c here and a plus c here. And since I said we're still solving for y, I'm going to isolate by moving the c1 over to here. Now notice, we have some arbitrary constant minus another arbitrary constant, which we can just simplify to one constant. And the reason why we can't just cancel these two plus c's out is because we don't know their values. They could be different. So we have to go with the assumption that c2 minus c1 is non-zero to account for all possibilities. Now I'm going to graph both of these curves on the same plane to show you how they're related. So when you're asked to graph these, you might just be tempted to just plot x like this, and then y equals 1 half x squared plus c. For this example, I'm going to take c equals 3. So that would look something like, like that. Just looking at this graph, it's not really super obvious or super helpful how they're related. So we draw another type of graph. This type of graph is a slope field. A slope field is a visual representation of this derivative at every point in the xy plane. Now let's begin the plot. So here our rule is dy dx equals x. Or what that means is at every point in the xy plane, the slope is equal to the x coordinate. So here at 1, 1, the x coordinate is 1. So we have a slope of 1. And here at uh, 2, 1, our x coordinate is 2. So we have a slope of 2. And notice we're not plotting points anymore. We're plotting slopes and we're plotting lines. Once there are a lot of them here, then you'll see what we're getting at. Now I've filled in the slope field for our given plane. And you'll start to notice that these slopes, as we go from left to right, they kind of trace out the path of a parabola, right? And wouldn't you know, our solution or our y is a parabola. And so when we take c equals 3 and we plot this, we get something like, like that. Now, obviously, I'm not the best artist in the world, but you can see that our y curve follows the slope field pretty well. And some terminology here, our y curve is called the solution curve. And that's because it's the solution to our differential equation. And the most important thing to know is that solution curves always follow the path of the slope field. And what that means is it's easy to approximate solution curves using just the slope field, which is what we're going to do next. Now you arrive at Euler's method. So Euler's method is a way to approximate the solution of differential equations using a recursive method outlined by the following rules. Given a start point, some start point x naught y naught, a derivative of the form f prime of x and y, and a step size of h, then, and then we have these rules. That's probably a lot, but we're going to break it down step by step. The easiest way to see how this works is with a graph. So whenever you use Euler's method, you're trying to approximate the value of here at x final from some known value here at x naught. 
the first step in making this approximation is dividing this interval into equal subintervals, each of with h, like so. So here I've split it into six equal subintervals of with h, and that represents that each time we take a step, we're moving a distance h, hence why it's called a step size. Now we're going to discuss what we actually do when we take these steps. So this is where the y rule comes in. This is that the next y, or the y associated with this x value, is the last y plus the step size times the derivative at the last point. What that means is we're taking the derivative at the last point and we're writing the tangent line until we get to this x value. For here, the tangent line is something like this. So we're going to go along the tangent line until we get to this x-coordinate. And then this is our y1. And after that, it's just a matter of repetition until we get to x-final. So here, the tangent line to the curve is something like this. So we're going to follow this tangent line until we get to our next stop. And then here, it's something like this. So we're following this tangent line here to our next stop. And at this point, it's something like that. So we're going to keep following until we get here. And we're just going to keep going. Okay, now we've reached x final, but notice that we're a little off from the actual value. Well, that's because each step we've taken was based on our last step. And since this is an approximation, there's of course going to be some error in it. So as we take each step, the error compounds, which leads to this final error. Now, one way to reduce the error is by increasing the number of steps or decreasing h. And you can think of each step as a correction to the course we are going on. So for example, if we just took this tangent line all the way here, we would have gotten here, which is way off. But since we stopped here, we made a correction and went this way, made a correction, went this way. So if you increase the number of steps you take, you're increasing the number of corrections you're making, which of course will make your curve more accurate. And also, because these errors compound in each other, if we were estimating an x final like here, that would be a lot less accurate than here. Because again, the errors compound. So as you go further from your start point here, you get a worse and worse and worse approximation. What we're doing here is we're reconstructing the curve with straight tangent lines instead of one continuous curve. And going back to our discussion about slope fields, these tangent lines are just us following the slope field to get a good uh, estimation of our actual solution. That's how Euler's method and slope fields are related. To close out the video, I'll do an example for you. So we're given that f of 0 equals 1, f prime is equal to x squared plus 2y, and our step size is 0.1, and we're told to estimate f of 0.3. So first we'll set up our rules like so, and now we'll begin building our approximation. We're given x0 zero is 0, y0 zero is 1. To find x1, this is x0 plus h, which is 0 plus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.1. Now to find y1, this is y0 plus h times f prime of x0, y0. And this is equal to, so y0 is 1 plus our step size times, so this derivative at 0, 1. So if x is 0, this goes away. If y is 1, this is 2. So our derivative is 2. And adding these together, we have y1 is 1.2. And by the way, don't let derivatives like this intimidate you. 
even though they are in terms of multiple variables, the only thing you're doing is just plugging in points. So you don't have to worry about super complex things. And now time to find point two. So x2 is x1 plus h, which is point one plus point one, which is point two. And then our y2 is y1 plus h times f prime of x1, y1, like so. And when we evaluate this, y1 we found was 1.2. And then plus our step size times, so 0.1 squared is 0.01. And 2 times 1.2 is 2.4. So our slope is 2.41. And so our final answer for y2 is 1.44. I'm just going to truncate at two decimal places so it looks nicer and it's not as annoying. And now time to find x3 and y3. So our x3 is x2 plus h, which is 0.2 plus 0.1, which is 0.3. And now our y3 is y2 plus h times f prime of x2, y2, which is, our y2 was 1.44, plus our step size times, so 0.2 squared is 0.04, plus 2 times 1.44 is 2.88. So our derivative here is 2.92. This sum is 1.44. 0.73. So this is our approximation of f of 0.3. And by the way, the real value of f of 0.3 is 1.83. We were still off, but it wasn't by a whole lot.